Hello, so um, today I'm actually making a video from my new apartment. Um, I moved in here a few weeks ago. Um, my mother was here visiting me for the last two weeks, so that's why I wasn't really able to make any videos. Um, I did do my best to stay out of language learning. I was still doing my job, and I've been making huge progress with the um, social network and also my online courses I've been doing. So everything's great, and now I'm finally in a more homey and cozy space. So. Uh, I don't have anything on the walls yet, so the space isn't super nice and great for video background uh, and the lighting is a bit dark right now, but I do have a, a lovely bay window here um, and I got some plants, so just know that over the next uh, few weeks I'm going to hopefully try to make this a really nice cozy uh, space both for my living and also for my videos so you guys can enjoy it with me. And today we're going to talk about um, motivation again. Now I know I've spoken um, about motivation quite a bit recently, um, but it's really a huge topic, right? It's very important and it's essentially, if your motivation is gone or if you don't have it to begin with, then you're not gonna be able to succeed. So, uh, and today I wanna share one more sort of um, real life current story from my own language learning journey with you guys uh, to hopefully um, inspire and share some new information and I think for a lot of you you'll relate very closely to what I'm experiencing right now. So one thing that I always talk about I love to do is I love to sort of collect a stockpile of, a, of, of content um, even stuff that I'm not able to really access right now. So when I start studying a language I love to sort of start compiling um, stuff right so I'll start looking for songs and music um, even though I know I won't be able to really take full advantage of that stuff yet, right? I'll start looking for films, um, TV shows, even novels, especially if I get a chance to travel to the country, um, which has happened a few times. I was learning Finnish at one point. I still love Finnish and I'd love to get back to it one day. But I was learning it sort of as an experiment to help um, my friend out who was becoming a Finnish coach. And so we were, I was sort of her test case. And I went to Finland um, to visit her and her boyfriend, and they're now, they're now happily married. Um, and my finish was very basic. But the first thing I did was I went into a bookshop and I, you know, I tried to find um, a children's book. And then I actually ended up buying two novels and I ended up with a third one. So I had like three novels. They were all sort of lighthearted, um, one was a comedy, but the point is that I took my chance to start stockpiling content while I had the opportunity. So I mentioned all that, and one of the reasons why I do this, um, aside from the fact that it's useful, right, it's nice to sort of be prepared so that when you finally reach those more advanced stages, you have stuff that you're able to take advantage of. But there's another reason. So the first thing is, when I start learning a language, um, let's say it's French, I will totally happily listen to French music and I'll watch French TV shows or watch French movies. And in the beginning, I'm happy to watch that, like the, the movie with English subtitles, right? Because the reason I'm watching the French movie in the beginning isn't because I necessarily think I'm gonna, you know, learn tons of vocabulary and absorb the language just like that. What I do find, although you do, it's, it's actually, amazing how much you pick up through watching movies in those early stages but I find that English subtitles for me as an English speaker it doesn't inhibit the learning of those things so maybe I'll do a video about that because it's a really interesting topic however another huge reason that I do this is motivation is because the more stuff I build up and as I start to acquire books and novels and TV shows and movies, I really want to understand it. It makes me get this feeling where like I cannot wait to be able to dive into that content. And so I study harder, it makes me motivated. And so that's something that is very relevant right now. So some of you guys know actually that I have this book. So this is Men som hat a kvinnor, which is um, in Swedish means men who hate women. And this is the original Swedish version of The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. So I've had this for a long time. Because when I first began learning Swedish, this is one of my big motivations. I really wanted to read this book um, 
in the original Swedish language. Now I also have the film, I have the original Swedish film um, that I actually did watch and I watched it with Swedish subtitles and it was pretty insane. Um, but it was a great movie, I really enjoyed it. But I also, for example, actually when I was in Helsinki uh, the second time when I actually technically moved to there, um, uh, my Airbnb host, we got really friendly and she happened to just have Eat, Pray, Love in Swedish. <laughs> Um, and she gave it to me because she didn't speak Swedish. So someone had given it to her and I thought it was lovely. And then I actually, while I was there, I bought this book. So, Jag är här i nuet. I am here in the present, in the now. And this is um, the a Mindfulness Diary and the Mindfulness Project. So, as you guys know, I'm really into meditation and sort of um, self-awareness and all these things. And so, um, I thought it was great and this is like a daily book. It has all these daily activities. I actually looks like I filled this out <laughs> Way back when I bought it um, But I got this in, in I was in Helsinki in sort of April 2017 and even then I had not been studying Swedish for quite a while, but and Isn't this great? It's like a, a creative sort of diary, daily diary with all these sort of mindful like mindfulness activities to do. But look at this. This is all in Swedish. This is the it's and I think this is wonderful because this the whole point of this book is it's daily activities for you to do to practice mindfulness. But it's all in Swedish, so it's amazing because they're short, right? Like, I mean, look at look how short these things are. Right, very short activities. So, but they're meant to be done daily and they're all in Swedish. So it's the perfect companion for a daily Swedish practice. I have the TV show Solsidan that I already have it all on my laptop. I got the Swedish subtitles. I really, really enjoyed that show and I've been dying to kind of get back to it. So the point is, and I have another Swedish book here. So the point is that I have these books, I have a couple of movies. I have, oh, I have other books too. I actually, I started, you know what? Oh, do I have it here? Do I have it? Yes, I do. Here it is. Um, in this, this is a notebook which contains notes for in man som, som heter Ove. So this is a man called Ove and I actually began reading this. You can see my notes here for the first chapter. I have the Swedish, English translation. Um, and look at that. I actually went through, looks like I went through like at least the whole first chapter. And so this overlaps with the, you know, I always talk about your content catalog, right? Remember we talked, I guess, tell you what. Remember that in my recent video, we talked about, these are those song lyrics that I have. These are all the Swedish songs that I studied before. Well, I also have it. This is my content catalog where I have notes for at least the first chapter of a novel that I did start reading in Swedish. And it was a delightful, delightful experience. It was extremely difficult for me. It took me a very long time, um, but it was a rich experience and I have that captured. So there's an overlap here with the content catalog ideas where you keep stuff that you do, you track your activities, and then when you come back to it, that stuff is waiting for you. But there's also this idea of just sort of building up content and so I've been studying Babel and actually it's been about a month now I think and I pretty much um, today uh, or maybe tomorrow I will finish all four of the major sort of courses and after that you know, there's a few others but I've been kind of dying to finish those courses because I wanted to finish Babel before I got back to this stuff. And so having this next to me, having it on my bookshelf, uh, finding this, because I didn't know where it was, and my mom actually had to bring it to me from England because I left it in England. Getting all this stuff, listening to Swedish songs again, it all made me so motivated, not just to learn Swedish, but it made me motivated to do the stuff that's not as fun. Now the beginning stages are really fun, but of course doing a Babel lesson or studying an Asimov book. It's not as fun as diving into a book or a novel, you know. Um, and so these things, they helped me stay motivated um, to not only learn Swedish, but also 
to to get through the initial stages and break into where I can really start to enjoy the language. And so basically today I will finish the Babel course in Swedish. There's some other lessons, but I think I'm just going to skip those because I've already done them. The main thing I wanted to get was that core language. And I just can't wait. I cannot wait to dive into this. This might become my new morning routine. We'll see. But so I hope that was interesting for you guys. So like I said, here's my new place. I did put my little plants here just to give you some scenery. There's my little bookshelf. Um, it feels wonderful to have a home again, to have a place that I'm actually comfortable in. And I'm just really looking forward to improving my videos. Um, and I really hope I can finally get back to the quality of my documentary. If you haven't watched that, please go check it out. It was my, it's the very first video that's published on this channel. And I did a few other ones here and there. The Spanish series had a few, a few videos where I really tried hard to make just fantastic quality content. And over the, over the last few years, it's just been so difficult with all the moving around. Even right now, I'm only able to record videos on my phone. I have no microphone. So I'm just, I'm super excited now. My life is stabilizing. I'm finally having more resources and I cannot wait to start producing just the best content that I possibly can and the best content that this channel has ever had. So thank you all for being with me um, and I'll see you in the next video.